Hi friends, welcome once again in another episode of Derivative. In previous video, we learned the derivative of the tan x, right? How the derivative of tan x used to, and uh, what is the value of derivative of tan x that is exactly equals to sec square x, right? And in this video, we're going to find out the derivative of the cot x, right? And again, as I have shown you the graph of the tan x in previous video, now I'm going to show you the graph of the cot x, right? Uh, this is exactly the graph of the cot x, right? when you plot in the graph you'll see like this right uh, in tan x it was something like this right uh, it was something like this but tan x is just opposite it is from this side right so and tan x and uh, tan x and cortex is you know it's something complementary like this right so uh, forget about this but, but uh, this is the graph of the cortex right it's totally th uh, different than the cot uh, sine and the cos right now here the derivative of the cortex at any 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 point suppose right uh, you take any point uh, suppose uh, let me change the color uh, fine suppose suppose uh, suppose you're taking here at this point or suppose suppose here or anywhere you're taking uh, anywhere you're taking it means simply the slope of the tan tangent at that particular part right at that particular uh, point you are taking the slope and the slope of that uh, tangent is the derivative at that particular point right of the cortex now this is the graph of the cortex and now suppose I'm taking any point right any point I'm taking suppose this I, I took now right and I need to find out the derivative of uh, the x uh, sorry derivative of the uh, function right at that point uh, at this time right of this cortex then it means simply uh, it means simply how this this function how the function of uh, the cortex or how the cortex curve in changing right how the y part and the uh, x part means how the change in y is taking place with respect to the ch change in x right so that that rate is exactly the uh, derivative of the cortex right so derivative of cortex at certain x value suppose anything it may be here anything any angle it may be x here represents actually the angle right at any angle so what is the value exactly right what is the value of x I don't know here anything it may be so it simply means that at particular point at that particular point how the curve is changing right how what is the rate of this ch change of this curve it simply means that or simply at particular point the slope of that uh, the, s uh, the slope of this curve at that point or you can say the tangent of the slope of the tangent is the derivative right so that we are going to find out over here now right so let's uh, start our lesson uh, as we were doing uh, in the previous video so we have to do this again from the princi uh, first principle method we are going to do from the first principle method we are going to find out the value of the uh, derivative of the cortex right so here what you have learned in the derivative that uh, uh, derivative of the any function right any function f of x is equals to right derivative of any function f of x uh, and we used to replace it by the f prime x right is equals to limit when h tends to zero that h is a small change in the x right a small change in that angle you can say uh, here h represents the uh, generally the angle here uh, the x part is simply here the angles are varying right I in this x coordinate right x uh, axis so a small change in h uh, h is just a small change right here some some in book some book you may see it as a delta x tends to zero so delta x and the h both are the same thing here right S is fx plus h if you suppose there are delta x then uh, here will be x plus delta x right minus f of x whole divided by h we have learned this from the uh, definition right in derivative and our function here is y our function is given that it's cortex right it's cortex our function is cortex now I'm going to apply this this definition of derivative for this function right so what will happen uh, see here in this function whatever you will insert here as a x you'll get as a cortex right if you insert here and a function uh, suppose p then you'll get again here cot p if you insert here fx as x you'll insert pain suppose f pain then you'll get cot pain if you insert here f anything whatever right so it's just a function like this right so you used to get like this but here x generally represents the angle right so keep this thing in your mind so <coughs> Uh, now I'm inserting here x plus h right x plus h so when I will insert here x plus h it will be caught uh, x plus h now right so now f prime caught x derivative of caught x is equals to uh, you, you can also write like this dy by dx or d caught x by dx is equals to now limit 
h tends to 0 right when h tends to 0 now I'm inserting x plus h so it will give me it will give me the cot x plus h right cot x plus h minus simply uh, now fx simply is equals to cot x so it is now cot x right whole divided by uh, whole divided by h right so uh, now how to solve this again as uh, we were doing in the uh, in the uh, derivative of tan video right simply we'll be changing this cot in the cos and the sine right as uh, we used to do in trigonometric chapter also limit here h tends to 0 here cot x plus h right so cot x plus h that is cos x plus h whole divided by sine x plus h because cot is equals to cos divided by sine right or you can say base to the perpendicular you can also say it like this right uh, minus cot x again the same cos x divided by sine x now whole divided by h right and as we had done in the uh, previous video right uh, that uh, when when there is something 2 by 3 and suppose 4 by 5 then we used to take the LCM of this 3 and 5 and uh, suppose uh, the LCM of the 3 and 5 is the 15 now and this 15 will be divided this whole 15 will be divided by this 3 right and whatever we'll get we used to write here suppose 3 now we'll divide 15 then we'll get 5 and whatever we are left in the numerator that that will multiply this whole part so and here in the minus and again 5 will divide this 15 so we'll be getting 3 and whatever is the numerator that will multiply this that is 4 so in the same way I'm doing here so when I will do the same thing over here I'll be getting uh, whatever I'm getting I'm just writing over here right uh, so limit h tends to 0 now see here here I'm taking the LCM of sin x x plus h and the sin x so sin x plus h times uh, sin x times sin x right now this sin x plus h will uh, divide this whole part then we'll be left with this sin x only right so sin x times and the whatever we are left in numerator will be multiplying with this uh, we're left in numerator with cos x plus h so cos x plus h will multiply this right and again minus this sin x will divide this whole part and when this sin x will divide whole this part then sin x and sin x will con cancel and will be uh, left with sin x plus h right and this cos x will multiply right and then whole divided by this whole divided by this h right so now uh, here we can do now limit h tends to 0 right sine sine x times cos x plus h right minus sine x plus h times cos x right and then whole divided by this whole divided by sine x plus h sine x plus h times sine x and this h will be also right because we know that a by b whole divided by c is equals to a by bc right so I'm just doing this a by b whole divided by c is just equals to the a by bc right so now uh, I'm doing here right so limit uh, at uh, h tends to 0 now how to solve this right uh, here what I want to say see look at this uh, this this only this uh, yellow color uh, uh, yellow color uh, uh, this uh, uh, trigonometric ratios right it is just like this now see sine a times cos b right and then minus uh, sine b right minus sine b times cos a right so it is just going to match with the formula that is sine a minus b right sine a minus b is equals to sine a times cos b minus sine b times cos a so here x will work as a, a and this x plus h will work as a b right so what i can write now here that's is equals to 
sin a that is a is equals to x minus b b is equals to x plus h right I just use that formula it's just the formula of the sine a minus b so whole divided by now sine x plus h sine x plus h times sine x right and the h and the h now again limit when h tends to zero right now uh, I can cut something here right this my positive x and my negative x will cancel out and I will be left with the uh, uh, I'll be left with the it will be actually minus x here see uh, this x plus h is the minus x plus h it is in the actually bracket it was in the bracket and when the bracket actually it was the c a minus b right and a is x and b is x plus h right x plus oh no it's not good okay x plus h this whole wa this whole part was b right so here x minus x and this minus will multiply this plus so it will be minus h so x x will cancel and this minus h will be left here so overall finally here what what we are left we are left with minus h right so now I can write uh, sine minus h whole divided by h times 1 upon sine x plus h right times sine x and uh, you know what we have learned a formula in, tr uh, in trigonometry chapter that sine minus theta is equals to minus 1 times sine theta right minus 1 times sine theta or simply sine minus theta is equals to minus sine theta right we have learned this so I'm just using here uh, it is minus sine h so what I can do here limit h tends to 0 minus 1 uh, times sine h upon h times 1 upon sine x plus h right sine x plus h times sine x right so now I'm plugging the value of uh, this h, e h tends to 0 so when limit h tends to 0 sine h upon h will be equals to 1 how because we have learned this formula that when limit uh, theta tends to 0 right sine theta divided by theta is equals to 1 so here limit h tends to 0 sine right sine h upon h will be equals to 1 and this is already here minus 1 right this minus 1 is already here and now it will be sine x plus h h right so h will be 0 now sine x plus 0 times sine x so uh, what we get here that minus 1 upon sine square x or simply what we can say minus cos sec square x that is f prime cot x so derivative of the cot x is equals to minus sec square x or simply you can say derivative of cot x is equals to cos sec square x so we get the value what we wanted to find out now right that is derivative of the cortex is equals to minus cosec square x and please remember this formula derivative of the cortex right uh, derivative of the cortex is equals to minus cosec square x because this is a very important formula and we'll be using this formula as, as a formula as a standard formula in further problems of derivative where we have to find out the derivative of the trigonometric functions right so keep these things in mind right so in the next video we'll be finding out the derivative of the other cosec x or sec x right so we'll be meeting in the next video right bye bye